um, I feel that if you carry yourself a certain way, right. you're going to approach the people that how you carry yourself. So if you want to act crazy and, you know, you want to ratchet, you're you, going to get ratchet people around. <laughs> cor- <laughs> you act classy. Yes. If you, it's classy. just it's really it truly yeah. is just the way you carry yourself. Welcome, welcome you and all to another episode of the Global Latin Factor podcast where we talk about, say it with me, I know you know it, Latino, everything. Thank you very much for being here. Make sure you go and subscribe to the channel. You're already here. You're helping us grow the Latino content, Latino space, Latino community, putting out amazing episodes with amazing stories. This episode, I want to dedicate it to Emma Medina, a.k.a. Bad Bone. Unfortunately, she passed away a few weeks back, November 1st, and she was one of our previous guests. And I think she was amazing. She touched many lives. Oh, I, we have something prepared later on. However, uh, grateful that I was able to interview her and learn her story. And this one's going to dedicate to her. So I appreciate her family for, uh, you know, just keeping her alive and all the people that she touched. Today, we have an amazing episode, amazing story, amazing capitulo, because... We have a, an individual originally from Mesquite, Texas. At the age of nine years old, her father took her to a class, a dance class, and that's when she knew this was for her. She was in love with this. She is passionate about what she does, the performing arts. She is trained, trained, classically trained in ballet, point, along with hip-hop, jazz, contemporary, modern, Horton, uh, Horton Graham, Caribbean, African, salsa, breaking, partner, yoga, aerobics. It goes on and on. She is doing amazing work with kids as well. Graduated from Booker T. Washington in the performing arts that led her to go to California at the Institute of Arts, graduated with a bachelor's in fine arts and a minor in science and mathematics. Michaela Simfuentes in La Casa. Hi, how you doing? Hi, hello. I started sweating. I don't know why. That was, okay. that was a lot of information we just, we just said. We're not going to cut it because I think it's um, I think it's, uh, the amazing work that you've been doing, the, uh, the fact that uh, it, I, when I started looking, I knew about you, right? I knew because of NG. I knew who you were, but I didn't realize until I found an article about how much you're done. And it's amazing. It's like, and you're so young, too. Thank you. Thank you. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. How are you? I am great. A little hot now. I don't know why. Oh, okay. Maybe it's a bad bone. They came oh. to visit. Okay, so first we're going to go ahead and start with a segment that I like to call Preguntas al Chile. Preguntas, Preguntas al Chile. She's done this before. Chile. We switched it a little bit, so she might not have all of them. Lista, are you ready? I'm ready. Tacos or tortas? Tacos. Corn tortilla or flour tortilla? Oof, that's a tough one. Lately it's been corn. Really? It has. Gorditas. Oh, flautas. Oh, no. <laughs> Which one? Oh, um, flautas. Flautas? Uh, do you like the, the chicken flautas? Yes. Okay, great. <laughs> what about the Mexican cocas or the jarritos? Which one do you prefer? Mm, the Mexican coca. Awesome. Why is that? Can you tell people that a Mexican coca is really different than a regular coke? Did you feel the, the, the taste difference? No. No? No. You haven't? I haven't, no. Really? That's so good. I just don't like the other one. <laughs> <laughs> good choice. Okay. <laughs> the agua de horchata, jamaica or tamarindo, which one do you prefer? Um, Tamarindo. Okay. Salsa verde or salsa roja? You like spicy? I like roja. Spicy. Mm-hmm. Menudo or pozole? Pozole. <laughs> Churros or flan? Churros. Good job. Menudo, pozole, chorzo, flan, valentina, tapatio, or cholula, hot sauce. Valentina. Awesome. What about the uh, corn, the uh, pastries, the conchitas? Do you like the brown ones, the white ones, or the pink ones? The white ones. Yes. See, she told me earlier, she, she didn't want me to disclose it, but her Spanish, she's not fluent. Oh, so we're going to go the there? the pronunciation uh- <laughs> was amazing. She did a great job. <laughs> 
It was it was it a secret? My bad. I didn't know it was a secret. Um, no, apologies. I mean it's pretty um it's pretty out there for the people that know me. <laughs> you sounded great. Your pronunciation is awesome. All right, so let's get to your story. Uh real quickly, again, as I mentioned earlier, I didn't realize how much of an amazing individual you are at a young age of other things you're done. I knew you from Miss Becky, uh the NG universe, that's how I call it. And uh, I just wanted to make sure that I, I talked to you because even the things that I've seen on social media is like amazing working with kids and traveling all over the country and different things that you have going on. So let's get started. Do I loved this question just to see if you know as far as your family. Do you know where your family, your heritage is from as far as like were they already here in Texas? Do you know if they ever migrated, your grandparents, and how was their journey over here? I could tell you one thing. What's that? What's that? What's Growing that? up, uh -huh. the majority of my life, I thought I had German in me. Why is that? Was wrong. Why is that? <laughs> so I'm actually Mexican and Swedish. Um, we recently found this out, maybe like within the past, maybe three years ago. Really? Uh, but growing up, my dad was in the army and he was also stationed in Germany. So oh. um, he knew German. So growing up, my dad would like count to 10 in like German. And so I am familiar with some of the German language just because my dad would say certain things. Mm. Um, and I just thought it was cool. Like, oh, yeah, I have yeah, German yeah. in me. And we all thought um, just because he thought as well with his family tree. Uh, my dad got curious one day and just started doing Ancestry.com. Turns out we're Swedish. You're Swedish. So, whole life wow. has been a lie. <laughs> but um, Thank you for your service, by the way, oh. uh, your father. So, so, were you born in Mosquito or you were born in Germany? No, I was born here. Okay, okay. okay. Yeah, my dad was just stationed out there when he was uh. in the Army. Um, but, no, my grandparents are from Mexico. You're from Mexico? Mm -hmm. well, you know what area in Mexico? I do not know. No? Mm -hmm. Never found out how they made their way over? No. Like as far as crossing over, you know, some people come with passports, some people come uh, across the river. It's That'd just be a opinion. great question to ask my grandma, to be yeah. honest. Not really? No, I really don't. I haven't. No, haven't that's cool. About I just it. that's why I I, yeah. I just like for me, like my mom, my dad. I love to ask their their. I'm so curious mm -hmm. about ev everything, especially their the way they came up, you know. Mm -hmm. And I know how they crossed over, how many times if they got caught, if you know things like that. And I just oh. love to know for myself. Yeah. It's unfortunate that I have didn't ask my grandma about her past, but I have an opportunity to ask my grandfather more when I get a chance. I just love to just get, ask questions. So anything about the Swedish side? Have you ever looked into it, the family, anything? <laughs> we just recently found this out. Really? Uh, no, it's so funny because actually the day that I found out, I called my cousin, and she lives in San Antonio. Uh -huh. And I was like, girl you know we're not half German? She's like, what? I was like, it's Swedish. She's like, wow, whole life has been a lie. So, uh, no, it was just a funny phone call that we had between her and okay. I. So, was it because of the counting that you thought you were German? No, 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 no. It was literally because of family tree. Um, why that, why that thought Who Who made that about. tree from? The whole entire family. The, like, the, all of the Cifuentes sides. Uh, so, just growing up, what? yeah, I don't. Um, that's a question that it's very hard to explain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This yeah. scenario. Yeah. But uh, long story short, all the brothers and sisters truly believed this, just because based upon like cousins and yeah, um, other family members. I see your European descent, though, yo. You know, um, but it's just not German. And then my dad took the ancestry doc ancestry test, and it turns out we're Swedish. But I'm saying, I mean, it's still Europe. It's still Europe, mm -hmm. you know, but it's crazy. So was it really hard to grasp that and take it in? The fact that you were not, you thought you were one thing, but you were not that thing? No, no, it wasn't no? hard at all. It was just, <laughs> it was that kind of a moment. But no, it wasn't hard at all. Mind blown. Okay, so take <laughs> me back whenever your father took you to the first school to dance at nine years old. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that day? I do remember that day. I was in a... I was wearing all black, and I was in a Spurs, a San Antonio Spurs T-shirt, mm -hmm. and it was a Tony Parker T-shirt. Go Maverick. It Go had, Maverick. <laughs> it had um, Parker on one side and then Spider-Man on the other side. I still remember this exact outfit. Wow. Uh, my grandpa actually gave me that shirt, and we had to wear all black. I came in with a Spurs T-shirt. Yeah. Uh, but now I still remember this day. Him and my mom actually sat outside and watched the entire thing, and. That was the day. Do you where... remember what school it was at that time? Yes. 
at that time, it was Beyond Belief Dance Company. Beyond Belief. Mm -hmm. And Miss Becky hadn't come into the picture, right, at that time? She she was with them as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's before they parted ways at that time. Correct. Okay. So what is it when you walk in that you that you really enjoy? Like what open your mind, your eyes and be like, oh, wow, this is. Um, It was the environment. I'm all about my environments. Uh, it was the environment. It was the talent that I was around. Um, and I just knew that this was like this was what I wanted. I felt the performer come out of me. I felt the drive being lifted. And growing up, I was always in drill team. Right. And it was just a different genre of dance that I got to get a feel and grasp of. And once they started switching um, styles on me, I was like, oh, this is different. Oh, wait, I like this. Oh, this looks good on me. I wasn't used to that. I was used to just one, you know, drill team style, which was, you know, it's peewee drill. Yeah. yeah um, but no, that was the day that I knew that this is this is who I am. This is what I want to become. Just like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Immediately. What was the first routine that they had you do or practice on at that time? It was it was just a class. Mm -hmm. I can't remember the exact song, but um, it was just a jazz class. Yeah. You pretty much you do technique on the uh, across the floor. You do technique in the center of the floor. You learn a quick combo at the end. It's just stuff like that. But I loved it. Yeah. And awesome. It I hope showed. I got everything right on your uh, uh, introduction. I didn't even bother to check because you had quite a bit of things on it. But no, I, was, I usually keep it very short. But it, it just kept very short. It was, <laughs> but it, no, but it, it kept, kept going. going. <laughs> No, that's the thing. When I looked at the article, it just kept going on the thing. Uh, so I'm like, oh, my God. I can, it, there's no way that I could just say, okay, No, you were like, listening. Like, I was like, wow, we're really, we're really listening to everything. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, but, but that's the, the crazy things that you are, I mean, the amazing things that you're done. So I like, wanted to keep it short. But at the same time, oh, my goodness, you've done so much. Like, I cannot just say you're a dancer. You've been here and there when mm -hmm. you've done all these and you have a degree and everything. It's like, no. Nah. But in case... Uh, I hope I got everything right. If you not, did. Did. we'll put Thank corrections you. on it. Okay, so after that, once you're trained, uh, w of course, Mrs. Becky is at that time at that school. She parts away and she goes in her direction. Do you go with her at that time and get involved with uh, Next Generation? Correct. Okay, mm -hmm. and tell me about that. What was it about that particular school, Miss Becky, her environment that she asked? Because I've been there. I felt it. Mm -hmm. But you can tell me what you felt at the time whenever you were seeking her. Because if I remember correctly, y'all were dancing out of a garage first. Correct. Because there was no school yet at that time. Correct. Okay, so tell me about that. Um, no, I just, I've always grown up with Miss Becky. She's always been by my side. Um, she is, she's my mentor. I can truly say that. She's been with me through thick and thin. Right. Um, through dance and non-dance purposes, honestly. Um, but... That is correct. We started off in a garage. And I still remember that I believe I was 12 or, thir 12 or 13. I can't remember. Um, I was going to nationals. And this was my first time ever going to nationals and competing as a soloist and competing for title. Mm -hmm. um, and I had multiple solos. And we were training in a two-car garage pretty much weekly and getting me ready to mm -hmm. go to Vegas for nationals. And I wanted it so bad. And I love her guidance. I seeked her guidance. She, I am so much like her now when I teach because she critiques every little thing that she has to say, like she can't let it slide. And I loved that. Mm -hmm. um, so I was in a two car garage performing for my life in this garage there was a little mirror that we, we had for me mm -hmm. to see myself, but I remember I would have my private lessons in that garage, and I, my dad actually cleaned out his garage for me, and I would have those private lessons, and then I would go back home to my parents' house and be in that garage all day, uh, and just training and working and working on my solos, yeah. getting ready, remembering the critiques that she gave me. And, um, yeah, we started off in a garage, went to Vegas, and won. For somebody that does <laughs> never danced before does or taken a class, what is the importance of the mirror? What is it? Why do you have to have a mirror? Just so you can see the alignment. You can see what the instructor is telling you. So if your hips are not aligned or if your foot is sickled or if the back of your knee is bent, your shoulders are being, uh, you know, they're rising, you could physically see it and 
besides being blindsided and if you're just in a room with no mirrors. Um, especially when you're at a young age, you're still learning your body. You're still learning your muscles. You're still learning how to engage in your muscles. Mm -hmm. So it's very helpful, especially for a young artist to have a mirror in front of them just so they can see, do I look good doing this? Is this the right technique? Oh, now I see what she's talking about. My foot is flexed or my knees bent or my bottom is out. Um, so that's the importance of having wow. that mirror. I didn't realize everything has to be. You have to look at everything. That's everything. Crazy. Yeah. There's a lot that takes place and just I even know. just in a little turn or always, jump. you know, for somebody that doesn't know, it's like, oh, just a mirror. But and you I know. do it. You know what? Because I've been to it is NG. the mirror. <laughs> exactly. But when I've been to a NG, I always look at you looking at the mirror and looking kind of sort of like we you have know, just, to know what looks good. Yeah. You have to. But I even tell my students this go in front of the, I'm all about performing. Like mm -hmm. if you and I tell them all the time. If you can entertain me, you could entertain anybody because yeah. I just feel like I'm a super hard critic, especially with myself. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm really big on the performing art, not just being an athlete, not just being a dancer, not just being a great technician. There's so many good technicians. But are you a performing artist? Can mm -hmm. you portray a story? Can you become that character? Can you express what you are trying to say to the audience, not only through your body, but through your face as well. You can't just have amazing movement right. and have this blank because who are you performing for? Mm -hmm. um, so I even tell my students, because they're like, how do you do this? Or how am I supposed to do this? Or I don't understand this. And I'm like, the music's telling you what to do. Mm -hmm. If the music is slow and ka 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 boom, like how, do, how, do you, like, how do you feel? Like, right. And go in front of the mirror and make faces. Mm -hmm. I do it all the time. I'm 26 years old and I still do it. Yeah. Literally turn on a song, trying to find my character. And I will turn on the song, look in front of the mirror, and I will dance for myself in front of the mirror, see if I like the faces I'm making. If I don't like it, okay, I'm in a closed room, a safe space. No one's watching me. I don't feel embarrassed. Like, mm -hmm. it's just me against the mirror. <laughs> and that helps me before I go on stage knowing exactly what face looks good on me. Yeah. But um, it's just a lot about your confidence, though, because there's people there are not able to even look in their own reflection sometimes because of whatever. I know, reason. and I, I, yeah. I even tell my students that I'm like, break out of that mm -hmm. embarrassment. Don't be afraid to be embarrassed. Um, I think that if they break out of it at a young age, once they get in their 20s or right. once they turn 18 and take off and go to college or doing whatever they want to do, um, it's such it's such just a different artist that you're working with, someone that's not afraid to go for it, yeah. whether than someone that's holding back and is a little timid to express an emotion or to an express um, a dance move that they feel that they're not comfortable with. If you just go for it, all they can tell you is, that looks crazy. Do something yeah. different. Yeah. <laughs> that's true. And that's what you're there for, too. Uh, we'll talk about that here in a little bit. One of the questions that I skipped on putting with us at Chile was, what, what it comes to mind when you hear Latina? Or the word Latino, Latinx. What first comes to mind when you just hear the word? Family. Okay. Do you care if anybody calls you Latina? Do you prefer to be like, maybe you don't like labels, maybe I'm just a human being, a person. That's what I'd rather be. Is it offend you if anybody calls you Latina, Mexican, whatever the case no. might be? Well, I don't know what Mexican, Swedish would be, but a mix Swedish. I'm just kidding. I'm I mean, I just up. say Hispanic. Hispanic? Mm -hmm. Cool, cool. <laughs> uh, I was mentioning that because... Um, Within our community, our Latino community, our Hispanic community, sometimes a lot of the times our parents don't either, for whatever reason, uh, limited belief or whatever the case might be, sometimes they don't push us, they don't take us here, they don't take us there. How does it feel for you? I know, have you ever pondered the feeling of your parents, your mom, and your dad always being able to be there, your dad cleaning the garage for you to be able to do what you do, your mom most likely probably always on the road with you whenever you were younger out mm -hmm. and about? Have you ever thought about that? No, I absolutely am grateful for it, for it all, because I'm grateful to have a set of parents that do everything for me, especially they sacrificed so much for me to live out my dream that I'm living now. So I am forever grateful for that. But with that, I knew it took a lot of discipline for myself. Mm -hmm. Um for my parents to do so much for me, especially at a young age, I knew I had to show up. I had to do the work. I didn't 
I've always had the mindset of someone's giving you something, you show up, you do the work, you be disciplined, you eat right, you work out. And even at a young age, my 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 dad and I have a lot of conversations. You're going to hear my dad a lot in this podcast. Oh, so good. So good. <laughs> my, I remember I was so young mm -hmm. and I remember my dad had a sit down conversation with me and he told me that if he was if I was serious about this art, that him and my mom would invest in me. But the second that he saw me slacking off and the second he saw me, you know, he goes, you're a dancer. You have to be healthy. You have to be fit. You have to, you know, study your parts. You have to study acting. Mm -hmm. He made that very clear at a young age that if I wanted something that I right. had to give in my all and that if I didn't give him my all, they'd both just stop. Like, So we're all human beings, right? At the mm -hmm. end of the day, I know you're build a little different than a lot of people out there however when you get to those difficult times even though you're dad and i know you have high hopes and you want to deliver you always have those days when sometimes everything's Correct. not functioning how do you push through those days um how do i that's a good question um where you draw inspiration and remember back of the things or the reason why you were doing it and he, like, I know it's your parents. I know he gave you the... Well, whenever I have, like, low days or bad days or days where I'm just... I journal a lot. Mm. Everything, every production, you could ask, like, any of the cast members that I've, like, worked with. So we have they a book always, in the future? They always see my journal, and yeah. I'm always journaling. It just helps me. It helps me with the production. It helps me with the show. It helps me to channel my character. And if I ever feel like, oh, my gosh, I am so sore, I'm so tired, or... Here I go, another 5 a.m. call time. And when you've been dancing every single day and you're physically tired, right. I literally just open my journal. And that is the biggest wake up call for me. Like, Michaela, you, this is what you're doing. This is your job. This is your dream. Like, remember why you love it. Mm -hmm. um, and I just immediately snap out of it. I'm, I'm really good at snapping out of funks right. and um, showing up and getting my job done just because I, I I know what I'm signing up for. I, I know what my job is, and I know that it's physical, and I know it requires a lot of physical work and a lot of mental and emotional work as well. So I am mentally prepared for those days already for me to feel, whew, I'm tired. But you know what? You got to get up. You got to go. You got to yeah. smile in the mirror. Read your little motivational quotes because yeah. that's what I do all the time. Yeah. I even have my little notifications on whenever they What's pop up. What's your favorite one? Oh, my goodness. There's so many. Oh, give me a couple. If you know, like, if you have many, give me at least I don't. I can't quote them exactly. Well, not verbatim. But. I'm paraphrasing. There's just a lot of quotes just, you know, pretty much summarizing them up. Mm -hmm. You wake up every day and you want to be the best. You know, show up yeah. for yourself. Yeah. Don't just show up for people. Like, yeah. you're showing up for yourself. Um, there's a lot where it says, you know, you, you've, there's so many obstacles that you have surpassed and you've come, there's going to be more to come, you know, just keep going because success is, you know, success just keeps coming, but you have to jump over those obstacles. You have to be strong-minded, um, just stuff like, I mean, where I are can't those mental, open. where does the mental <laughs> comes from? Cause again, you, uh, your mentality too, not only your physical and, and then the work that you put in. But the actual mental part is also something that is interesting. Where do you get pick that up from? My parents. Some, your parents. Mm -hmm. <laughs> were they always playing. Uh, that was so Tony quick Robbins? for me to say. Were they were playing Tony Robbins in the car with you, or were that was just in, like just giving you encouraging words, or how was it? As far as my mental, yes. how strong it is. Yes. I both have extremely mentally strong parents. My dad is super. Like they both are such hard workers. Mm -hmm. I've seen both of them work crazy hours of the day and still being able to attend to me, which is mind blowing, especially now as I get older. Mm -hmm. um, but I grew up around hard workers and I grew up around working hard for success. So growing up seeing that, you become it. And I... If I feel that if I'm in an environment that doesn't have that mentality, that means I'm just in the wrong environment. You got to keep moving because you want to be around people that are driven, that you're having a bad day. Okay, come on, girl, get up. Let's go. We, we got work to do. I understand right. you're having a bad day. Let's 
let's talk it out, you know, let's have a little conversation. But at the end of the day, I'm here for you. You're here for me. Let's, we got to get this job done. <laughs> Absolutely. So your journal, is it like open book? It's not a diary. It's actually like a journal. So you, people are able to read through your... Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> you don't look in my journal. No. That's what I was asking earlier, is there a future? Is there a book coming later on? In I the mean, years, there you know? could possibly be. <laughs> But no, if you're asking me if I if that's open to the public, no, no. <laughs> it has a passcode. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's cool. That's cool. Okay, let's take it back a little bit. Well, when you were with Miss Becky, so you were there to prepare you. How did you do whenever you went to compete? Oh, how, I how got first. I got the of course yeah. the title. I got all Absolutely. that. Absolutely. And then of course you kept going with her and keeping um, being with uh, NG mm-hmm. competitions and different things like that. What is the most important lesson that you have learned from Miss Becky? Uh, that either she told you or that she showed you of the things that you need to do as far as being who you are and performing and the performing arts and dancing? I think one of the biggest, one of the biggest things that she has told me as far as being successful in the arts and as an educator, specific, specifically as an educator, mm-hmm. she has always told me, Michaela, you need to learn how to coach and teach people of all ages. She was like, do not, do not hold yourself back from something. If you, there's, cause there's a, I mean, I know a lot of people (laughs) that some, I mean, it's just their preference. You know, some people's preferences are to teach children that are, you know, 10 and up or eight and up Mm -hmm. or five and up. But I was always trained and taught to teach all ages from 18 months on up. That's just wow. because that's what I saw her do. And mm-hmm. mind you, I never questioned it. It was just immediately like, Michaela, this is what it is. Like yeah. you have to, this is what's going to make you so diverse or um, just so much more marketable as an educator yeah. to being able to not only just teach somebody that's 15, 16, 17, 18, but you can also train a two-year-old that's yeah. learning how to point her toes. That is, learning how to tap her toes on the floor and flex her feet, you know, that's when they're learning their mobility of their movement Mm -hmm. and of their body. So I think that has been the greatest piece of advice that she has given me as an educator. That's, this trips me out that even the smaller things that we never notice, pay attention, toes, pointing, things like that. Oh, everything. So so important. That's crazy. Y'all like ninjas. Kind (laughs) of. Okay. So moving forward, uh, yeah, go through school. Uh, as, as far as like Booker T, is that something that you have to apply and try out? Yes. Yes? Mm-hmm. And how was that for you? It was amazing. Yeah. I recommend that high school to every student that I have, every mm-hmm. student that I encounter. Go for it. Audition. Because that school will open doors for you. That school will open doors for you as an artist. Mm-hmm. It will, you'll become more diverse. You'll understand the arts in general, not just a dancer. And you could also cross cluster at that school. You can be a vocalist, you could be a dancer, you could be an actress and a dancer. You know, there's such thing as cross clustering, which is, I think is amazing. And you go to school every day with people that want to be successful in this industry that it's just, it's just amazing. Have you seen high, have, Grease? Grease is real. Yes. Grease is real. Yeah. High School Musical, that's real. Yeah. <laughs> it's not just a movie. Right. <laughs> that is Booker T. You really? will go in, you hear the violins, you see dancers dancing in the hallway, visual artists painting their canvas. Um, just like, in the, 100%. like that show. You'll be in the stairwell. The I remember a lot of musicians I had to play their instruments in the stairwell. Outside, you might think someone's getting in a fight, but no, that's their monologue. They're, they're rehearsing what? a scene. Uh-huh. Um, ran into those a couple times. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. No, it's just a scene. And cut. <laughs> um, but That's funny. No, it's just, it's an amazing school. And I recommend all my students to just go for it, audition, because they teach you both the commercial and the concert. Is that when you did the dance. reels that I've seen of you? They're in the, in this uh, YouTube? It's like the two reels. Are reels. With, oh. Two of them. Um, I know that one of the reels was with my agency, Icon Studios Talent Agency. With uh, they were doing makeup. Mm-hmm. Were that doing was with Icon. Icon. Mm-hmm. And then there's another one of you dancing. Just dancing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Those would so those are after Booker T. Correct. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you graduated. You start looking for a school to go to, and what made you draw to California? 
What made you want to? Um, Cal Arts. I actually had a teacher. Mm-hmm. His name was Giovanni Allen. He attended Cal Arts. And I, he was one of the first instructors that I've worked with that really did open my eyes to contemporary movement. And what's contemporary movement? Ooh, explaining contemporary. I it's just there's so many different ways to explain it now because mm-hmm. I just feel like the word the genre of contemporary has evolved so much, mm-hmm. especially now. Right. Um, just depending off you're like more of a staccato mover or if you're more of like a flowy mover. Um, but for me, I just like telling a story i like being able to be sharp and smooth at the same time right um i think that's one way that i truly can describe contemporary movement is it's it's you could have power behind it you could have subtleness at the same time you could go sharp 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 smooth 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 mm. hit and ca- like you know it's just i'm over here saying ca- 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 boom, boom, like you know exactly what i'm oh, talking about i know about. what you're doing <laughs> what are you talking about i know exactly what i know but it. it's just contemporary has just evolved so much and there's just so many different ways that you can move to contemporary just depending on what kind of mover you are so that particular individual doing that kind of drew you go to 100 percent. 100 percent. how was your experience over there as far as i loved it yeah i loved my school i loved the students i loved my friends extracurricular activities over there as far as projects and different things like that what was it that you oh, were able yeah. to do over there um we were able to work with a lot of international students, Mm -hmm. a lot of different choreographers that uh, the director would fly in for us, which was truly amazing. We got to work with people from all over the world to come and they set pieces on us. And of course we had an audition, so we'd all be excited just to, just to be a part of their audition in general was a blessing. And then when you're casted, you jump up and down because you're like, wow, (laughs) he's all the way from, I don't know. There's a, a Korea. Uh, we had a lot of a Korean uh, exchange students come yeah. in, um, but it was awesome. I loved it. And I grew so much from it, especially just meeting new people from all over the world and the language barriers that we went through and mm-hmm. had to experience learning how to communicate with your body because yeah. the language barrier yeah. was a lot. I mean, I learned an entire duet <laughs> with a uh, student that spoke very little English, but she was amazing. Um, spoke very little English, casted me with a duet with mm-hmm. a male dancer. Mm-hmm. And pretty much we learned that entire duet through just movement. She would say little things here yeah. and there, but it was strictly just with movement. And I thought it was awesome. Awesome. It was, it was, you, will you say temporary is like the thing that you pay for more as far as all the type of dancing that you do? Because you're training all kinds of, I, there's a list of things that mm-hmm. you're training. But is that the one that you would say is more of a thing that you enjoy more? or just, Contemporary movement? Yes, contemporary movement. Um, I mean, I enjoy it. Right now, I do a lot of, oh, no, I do every, I do a lot. Oh, these past, this past year has been predominantly hip hop, jazz everything mm-hmm. hip-hop jazz contemporary ballet point <laughs> i've been casted in this year yeah but no i i wouldn't label i would never label myself as a contemporary dancer just because mm-hmm. i truly do love each style what and i you, love the way i feel if there was doing a title it. for you as far as what you do because of what you do what will you be all around i would say all all around but is there another word that you do for somebody that's like you that's trained like you that I would Pretty just, much versatile. Just say you're just a diverse performing artist. Mm. If you you're able to, if you are able to hip hop one second and then throw on your point shoes another second and then go into a jazz combination and then throw on your tap shoes, I mean you're so diverse. Like how would you not get booked? Like you could do right. everything that we're asking you to do. And then plus if if you could do like salsa and then all of a sudden break break out into break dancing and spin on your head, like there's just so. The more diverse you are, the more marketable you are. Can you spin on your head? <laughs> you know what? Mm. Halfway. A There's a bit, video. A bit. <laughs> Not spin completely, I, I no. I need to find that video. No, I actually, got some water for you if you like. It's clean okay. water. Thank you. I washed the cup myself. Oh, you did. Mm-hmm. Got it. So I'm going to look for that video. I'm pretty good at finding stuff. Oh, no. It's like on Instagram. Um, I'll still find it. Okay. Go, yeah, go ahead and I find it. It's like, a half, it's like a half second. I am. Um, like I'm, I can balance on my head. We balance mm. on our heads a lot. 
Yeah. But as far as like spinning and break dancing, I don't want to break my neck and all that. Yeah. But one day sure. I was experimenting and we did get it on video where I kind of just went click uh, and I landed it. But it was nice. only like, I'm telling you, it's a half spin. But you know what? I'm going to still call it a spin because I spun. You spun on spun. your head. On your head. Okay. So moving forward. So I know that you have gotten tons of awards. You know, I couldn't even look up how many things, first places and different things like that. What is your favorite thing that you have won so far? Um, leading all the way up to when you went to to California uh, that you are really proud of as far my as... My bachelor's degree. Your bachelor's degree. <laughs> 100%. Not even the competitions of any of the... Well, okay, I think my let's go with the dances. Degree, 100%. <laughs> okay, well, yeah. I agree with that. But in regards to dancing, any of the ones that stand out more as far as first places or anything like that, they really... Um, for me, it's not about the first places. Like, first place trophies, I mean... When you're younger, those are like your entire yeah. world. But as you get older, it's like they're just trophies. I mean, right. yes, of course, when you're older, you're in that competitive mindset. You want to be first, 100%. Yeah. You want to get that first place. But now, being older, now I'm not in that. I'm not, you know, doing competitions. I'm not a child, but. Yeah. Um, Do you still have all the trophies? Does mom have all the trophies? We still have all awesome. the trophies. Is it a whole room, mom? Yeah, so I, I don't doubt <laughs> we it. Still have I wouldn't the trophies, doubt it. But. I what I appreciate right now a lot being rewarded for is my choreography. I do get a lot of cho uh, choreography awards each year, which I am. I take so much pride in that, um, and I'm very proud of it as well. Just because I do put so much thought and effort into yeah. my choreography when I set it on dancers. Mm -hmm. So when I do get awarded and do get recognized, and when they bring me out on stage and when they ask who your choreographer is and they say Michaela C. Fuentes, like it's such a proud moment just because I'm not, I'm not the one performing it on stage. Like I am giving them my choreography and I'm mm. perfecting it with them and I'm working with it every single uh, week. Right. Um, so now when I do get rewarded for choreography, it's such a great feeling because, you know, you put so much work and so much thought. And again, me journaling out, pieces to right. put on these dancers and which piece looks best on them and when i do set pieces on dancers i always give them about like five songs to choose from and nine times out of ten they always choose the one that i want which is great <laughs> pieces will be the whole the whole performance Correct. so the dance piece so the okay. the perf um the choreography that i'm saying i need setting to understand your lingo it's okay <laughs> you know Kiki kaka, you're gonna start saying yeah, that at you the know end. what i mean <laughs> so i got you now okay so let's forward you get your bachelor's degree. Oh, actually, happy belated birthday. You turned 26 not that long ago, if yes. I'm not mistaken. But you get your bachelor's degree. What is the first opportunity you get? Is it the school where you go and start teaching? Or was there other opportunities you no, get No, it was throughout college. I was even performing and working in the industry. I started working in the industry when I was 15 years old. Mm -hmm. So. You were a couple of videos for artists that I was helping out at one time. Uh, Louis the Great and mm -hmm. I think a couple of others that I was involved. So. I've been knowing you for a minute. <laughs> yes, and you were already doing videos at that yeah, time, even so way back. I started when I was 15, really just kind of, boom, went into the industry. Um, and I absolutely love it. I yeah. love, loved it. I feel like I, I, I think I said it last time. I am pretty much, I'm one of the youngest in the room every single time, but it's really just how, how much you put in the work and, being able to live up to that standard right. that they want. Um, but, yeah. When you said 15 and you're 26, that's a decade already. Mm -hmm. And some of the things that you've been doing. <laughs> Don't stop saying my age because I'm, I'm not forever saying 21. That. <laughs> well, all I said was you started 15. It's forever been a 21. decade. You know, uh, you're 25 forever. That's, far, that's what it goes, right? That's how ladies go, 25 forever. That's, it's that's 21 my forever. <laughs> okay. Okay, 21. My bad. It's a new one. When did the opportunity, you're doing work, different things like that. When did the opportunity of the school come about and what made you want to start beginning to teach? I know that you were with NG, all y'all help mm -hmm. each other, all y'all teach each other and help get the uh, the actual coordination going. But what made you want to go to teaching? Um, well, I started teaching when I was 15 as well. Mm. <laughs> so teaching has always been something that I've always done. But being in my career is being a performing artist. So acting, choreography, uh, choreographing, dancing, modeling. Right. Like I am truly, that is my career. So I know that what I want to do for the rest of my life until I choose to go in a different direction, if that even happens, because mm -hmm. as far as right now, no. Um, but 
um, I want to be in the performing arts right. every single day. That's all I want to do. That's all I want to work. So I will go and I will seek the opportunity or I will go find it. I will mm -hmm. go online. I would look, you know, just any yeah. any job, like any anything that I want to do, I will seek it and I will look for it. I'm not one to just, you know, sit back and wait for it to come. I know that you are enjoying the episode for today. If you are, so please subscribe to the channel, leave us a comment, leave us a thumbs up, and now back to the episode. You know, I really like to put myself out there, go meet people in person, go to, you know, a networking, a networking um, event. Yes, or like networking all the time mm -hmm. and uh, just being out and about and just getting or to Or going to dance people. studios and just, you know, telling them about myself, sending them my so resume. you actually went to studios and talked to the studios mm -hmm. so also whenever you I were sure not a place? did. Yes. <laughs> wow. I sure did. I will send them my, my resume, my headshot, my dance demo reel, my teaching demo reel, my biography. Um, was it hard to get and land a teaching job eventually or did it take a minute to... Cause no. Because people are not seeing what you were doing and have been doing for the past few years? No. Um, it wasn't hard at all. It, I, I'm grateful to be in this industry and to have met people at a young age. So mm -hmm. as I got older, you know, just having those connections or having those friends to bring you in, which is amazing. And it's a blessing to have that. Um, but no, and if I don't know certain people or if I don't know a certain company, I like to make myself appointed to them. Like, this is who I am. This is what I can do for you. This is what I can offer. I will send you A, B, and C. Right. Um, everything that they need, I'll just submit it. And, you know, if they want to meet in person, great. If, you know, if I'm not the perfect fit, okay, amazing. You know, mm -hmm. let's move on. But no, if usually if I don't know them, I do make it appointed to meet them and to for them just to know who I am. Right. So right now, currently, you're teaching where? I am teaching at Texas Galaxy mm -hmm. and Fearless, Fearless Dance Company here in Dallas, and also Akiba Yanath Academy here in Dallas, Texas. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're in three schools. I am. And then you you focus mainly on what age group to what age group? I start with my littles from 18 months. And all the way up. So whenever. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And uh, what is it the more reward? Of course, get them to teach them, get them to show them, inspire them. But what else is it that gives you like a, a sense of satisfaction? For Of course, as a performing arts, you love it. It's all you involved with it. But what else does it give you satisfaction in to be able to mold these kids and to be possibly something great in the future? You know, as an educator, it is amazing to see a student grow. And especially, like, I have this one student. She's a prime example. Her name is Ariana. She came to me, or her mom came to me and mm -hmm. told me that she had never danced. She's never taken a dance class. You know, mm -hmm. this is her first time. And she really wanted to audition for Drill Team. And she told me, she was like, my daughter has never taken dance. We saw your information on the website. We're intrigued. I really want her to learn from you. And I was like, okay, and I'm on a mission. Like, I want this girl to, yeah. to make the team. And um, she's like, can you have my daughter be on the team by, I think I had two or three months to get her ready. Wow. And um, I said, I can do it. I can do it. She goes, no, can you? And I was like, yes, ma'am. I said, I can have your daughter be on this team. Was the daughter devoted to doing it too? Correct. She yes. was. And when I first met her, sweetest girl, um, but when I first met her, she could barely, you know, touch her toes. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, we need to work on flexibility. We need to work on this. And I immediately started, like, figuring out what she needed to do as a dancer. And I, I'm one, every time a person has a private lesson with me, mm -hmm. I always give them homework. So I write down five bullets that they need to work on. Mm -hmm. And I'll write down the combination. And then I'll write down the critique so they could go home and have, work on those five things. So when they see me next week, I'll look at them, critique it a little bit more, but then we can move on just so they right. can have homework to go on, to go home and work with. Mm -hmm. So every private lesson gave her homework and told her what to do. I would write down the exercises. I'd write down yeah. the dance sequences. And she did everything that she was supposed to. And I still remember this day. I just got done teaching. And um, it was around 9.15. Mm -hmm. And her mom calls me and she's crying. 
she goes, Coach Michaela. Ooh, she goes, Coach Michaela. She said, mm -hmm. thank you so much for what you have done to my daughter. She goes, you have truly made her the dancer she has always dreamed to become. She goes, not only did she make the drill team, but she made varsity. What? And this Amazing. little girl has never danced, like never taken a dance class. So for me, I started crying because mm -hmm. I took I take so much pride and I put so much effort into my students and I never want to fail them ever. I want them to be better than me. I want them to be better than the expectation that they set for themselves because that's what happened with her. I ever... felt that she wanted to just not only be on that drill mm -hmm. team, but for her to make varsity was just like, yeah. you did that. Amazing. <laughs> That's crazy. I mean, it's not crazy. It's very logical because of the work that you've done and the effort that you put into it. That's amazing. Do you ever see yourself in those kits going back in time and walking into one of those places? 100%. Yeah. I see it all the time with so many of my students. I just look at how they're dancing or their demeanor or their such their devotion and dedication to mm -hmm. the art or seeing them struggle on something. And I'm like, wow, this was me when I was 12 or this was me when I was 13. Um, I see it all the time. Yeah. I see it when girls are trying to find, you know, they're trying to they're trying to explore their movement. They're trying to figure mm -hmm. out what looks good on them. And I see a lot of flashbacks That's awesome. every day, <laughs> every day. I'm That's like, that awesome. was me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Amazing. Okay. So let's fast forward now. You keep teaching, but you have an agency now that you're part of. I don't know if you were with different agencies, but you're currently with an agency that helps you with the booking, I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. So last, what, 2023? It's been very busy for you, right? It's been crazy busy. What have you done so far? And then we'll talk just a little bit of maybe the things to come in the future for you. Well, what have, what part of events you've been traveling all over the country, mm -hmm. first of all? Can you tell me a few places you've been to and what are the projects that you've been involved with? Wow. Going back this year. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, for starters, the, I did a music video with Twista. I choreographed it. Nice. Um, that one dropped this year. So that was a great start to my year, seeing that music video come out and seeing my work being put on there um that was amazing i did so many commercials with icon i can't even i, I know the recent one i just did was with maker's gym mm. that was super fun um but no i was able to perform at the sorry poppy tour i did the mary Kay uh annual show that they have uh their yearly TV. show On this TV? was mary Kay. it was broadcasted but they have a huge show that's like a national show. Mm -hmm. And um, I was able to work with artists from America's Got Talent. And, you know, so many, there's just so many people from different shows mm -hmm. that I was able to work with there that were not just dancers. They right. were uh, musicians. They were vocalists. Um, they were acro uh, acrobatics. Uh, there was just so, so many different, so much talent there. It was insane. Right. And then the cast in general, the dance cast in general, was just can't even say they were amazing <laughs> but did Black that words. look at you i know they, you always have something to say come on it was, what is it? they it's, were just they're so good they, they were just amazing nice just absolutely amazing yeah and uh did that then after that i was casted for illumination sensation they have a huge production at the State Fair of Texas. Nice. Got casted for that. And then after that, I got casted for as a soloist for, um, was a lead character for The Nightmare Before Nutcracker. And we recently just finished that you and finished wrapped it that. up. Yeah. Then I also was casted for a Peacock and Oxygen opportunity. And Peacock and Oxygen opportunity. Blew out for that and came back. What else can you say about that one? That's it. <laughs> Nothing to do with the genre of music or anything um, like that. I don't want to get you in trouble. What I can't say is that. I don't want to get you in trouble. You will see me in 2024, 2024. on Peacock and Oxygen. And I am a, I am playing one of the greatest Latino artists, Latino artists of all times. <laughs> Anyways, we know who it is. We did an episode <laughs> about her. Y'all can check it out. She didn't say nothing, by the way. It's all us. My investigative journalism that I do here of who it is 
Uh, Carlos, clip in the thumbnail whenever you see it because we know who it is going to be. I'm just saying, congratulations. Well deserved. At a very young age, as we mentioned earlier, 21 years old, you've done some amazing work. And I mean, wow. Okay, so it, the school, the, the I know you said in regards to the, um, backtrack a little bit, what is the most rewarding reward that you, or the uh, actual choreograph that y'all won that you felt very proud? I know all of them are your babies, mm. but was there one particularly that stood up more as far as like, winning the competition with your crew and why? Um, I think this most recent one was oh my gosh, what was the title? It was rec it was recently this year. Um, oh, it was called Love in the Dark. Mm. That one. It it recently just happened within the past year. And that won choreography awards almost at every competition. And I took so much time and so much effort. Um into that into that um piece in particularly so for that one to be awarded so so many choreography awards and also to be placed first at almost every competition was truly i was truly grateful for it yeah but that was great i loved creating it i knew the dancers that i had put it on would be able to get it it did take a, a minute for them to understand but it wasn't until I sat down and I actually broke down the dance with them and I opened up myself to them, what the dance meant and what it meant to me and what this movement meant, because truly every movement had a meaning to it. And um, I don't share my personal life with my dancers because mm -hmm. I just don't. Mm -hmm. But I had such a close bond with those particular dancers that they just were not understanding the feeling or they were not understanding the story. And I was trying to tell them more about what the song meant. Mm -hmm. But then one rehearsal, I was like, why, why is it not clicking? Why? It just wasn't clicking. We were so close to right. going to competition. Finally, I just opened up and told them what each movement meant to me. And it immediately just, it was like a light switch. It clicked. Mm. And they did amazing. They did absolutely amazing. The performance was amazing. They performed it every time the way I wanted it to be performed. And I'm glad that I gave that piece to them. They truly did. Was it special to you because there was a challenge of the disconnect from them to get it to we be able to find a solution for you to be able to relay what you wanted to because wording was not working. And then certain words that you told them, they were able to like, yes, that's what we needed for us to be able to express what you wanted them to do um i think that it was just um it was more of i guess they needed to find that connection within themselves they needed to find that connection um with an experience that they had with themselves as well so i felt that if i opened up my experience that i had with that mm -hmm. movement or with that piece or with that song um, it would give them an example of what could be similar. Um, and I feel that once I gave them that example personally, it opened up a door for them artistically. Nice. Okay, being in the industry, and this is tying back to one of the things that Ms. Becky uh, had talked to you about, because not only does she, you know, you mentor, teach you, help you uh, mold to where you are, but also in the industry itself, there's funny business sometimes. For girls, women, little girls, women that are moving into the industry, what is the best advice that you have for certain situations that come that are uncomfortable for mm -hmm. them to be safe and be able to just focus on the things that are important and push their career forward instead of staying away from those distractions or those or how I even handle those particular approaches of people that are uncomfortable mm -hmm. that probably in the industry come about? I think it's the way you handle yourself and I think it's the way you approach as well like how um how you carry yourself i feel that if you carry yourself in that demeanor that they are or in that arena that they're in um they're gonna approach you the way they want to approach you because they feel that they're more comfortable with you already but as a performing artist you need to understand the work that 
you need to understand the importance of yourself. I could mm-hmm. truly say, mm-hmm. and who you want to, who you want to approach you. Um, I feel that if you carry yourself a certain way, right. you're gonna approach the people that how you carry yourself. So if you want to act crazy and you know you want to act ratchet, you're you, gonna get ratchet people around. <laughs> cor- <laughs> you act classy. Yes, if you, it's classy. just it's really it truly yeah. is just the way you carry yourself. Um, I'm grateful that I have never encountered a situation like that. Um, I'm grateful that I've worked with so many professionals that Mm -hmm. handle themselves greatly. And even when I was at a young age in the industry at 15 years old, I still to this day have not had a bad experience as far as just because when I was 15, I already looked like I was 26 and I just stopped kind of growing. (laughs) (laughs) I I looked like a woman when I was 15. So um, I'm grateful that I didn't encounter any creeps or any yeah. you know s- stuff that made me feel uncomfortable but then again i had such a strong pack around me so much powerful wi- men and women from the ng family that we all had each other's backs yeah. we're all brothers and sisters but as far as advice i can truly give to a performing artist would be carry yourself properly um be prepared for anything watch your delivery watch how you say certain things be careful what you say um think before you speak and have knowledge before you want to preach about something because don't just preach and you're saying the wrong information (laughs) great advice as far as for you the uh i had sent you uh, if you had any questions anything that you wanted to touch up that was in your heart of whatever topic it is it didn't matter do you have anything that you wanted that you had in mind that you felt like in your heart you wanted to express for whatever reason nothing i just want to say that i get questions a lot as far as mm-hmm. um they call me coach michaela <laughs> <laughs> like coach michaela how how do you do this how do you book this how do you what is your mindset how are you so how can you do so, so many things at one time right and I feel that my biggest advice to everybody is to be organized, is to have a schedule. Um, as far as the art, the art side of it, I tell my students all the time, don't be afraid to go for it. And I feel that I can truthfully say for myself, I just go for it. I recently just did The Nightmare Before Nutcracker, and I was a lead character, and I played the lead mouse. I was a mouse. And I was a proud mouse. A proud mouse. <laughs> the best mouse they ever but had. But that, that production yeah. in particular was based upon a novel. Mm. And I'm grateful that our director, um, she gave us the novel for us to read. And as I'm reading it, I'm reading through my character. When I first read, it's like, okay, you're trying to figure it out. You're trying to become this character. You're trying to mold into that character. Because I knew that when I stepped on stage, I needed to be Cyrus. That was my character's name. Cyrus. I needed to be Cyrus. Mm-hmm. So I'm dressed as a mouse completely. You never see my face besides one time in this entire production. And then of course, whenever we bow. Um, well, I can see some mouse right now. But I knew that I needed to channel mouse. Yeah. Mouse movement. Mouse, mouse, mouse energy. Mouse <laughs> energy. I was the mouse. Mm-hmm. And um, mm-hmm. it's just, I went for it. I truly did go for it. I would, I would read it. I would journal it. I would be in front of my mirror, right. literally doing the craziest movements in my living room, just trying to figure out what looked best on me. And I went for it every single time. And I feel that with each show that we did, because right. we had shows every day for an entire week, mm-hmm. um, it just became more. And I truly did love molding into that character because it was something that I wasn't. And I could be, it's so much fun being a character yeah, on yeah. stage for 20 minutes. And then finally, when you take off your mask, you're like, oh, it's me. But no, my biggest advice would just be to go for it. Because all somebody could tell you is, is do something different because that wasn't it. Or try something else because that doesn't really look good. That's all they can say. They can't, like, they're, for me, it's don't be afraid of rejection mm-hmm. and don't be afraid to go for it and don't be embarrassed. Because for- I feel that embarrassment will yeah hold someone back just yeah. go for it for somebody that's not so disciplined maybe not really organized what would you how would you tell them to structure their day like a general idea you know because everybody's different 
but what works for you so far as far as like let's say wake up in the morning how do you structure the day as far as the things you need to do as soon as i wake up in the morning i look at my phone calendar mm. immediately um but even the night before before i go to sleep i look at my calendar to see what i have lined up for the next day just so i could be mentally prepared i'm big on preparation as well mm-hmm. um being ment- being mentally prepared being physically prepared for the show you're auditioning for or for the commercial you're auditioning for for the movie or the television series like anything you want to be prepared so i feel that my biggest advice for them is to get a calendar (laughs) get a calendar if you're better with on your phone or if you're better with physically writing it out get a calendar um get a journal for me i'm all about my journal i love my journal i journal for everything but my biggest thing is a calendar to begin being organized and you know maybe setting up goals for that month if you want to do, and I tell my students every day, mm-hmm. set up goals for the month. And I always tell them, if you can learn three to five new things every single day, yeah. I go, imagine how much more intellectual your brain will be at the end of the week. Right. Just to say that you learned three new things every single day. I tell them that whether it be mannerism, whether it be a new word, whether it be a math problem, I don't know, learn three to five new things mm-hmm. every single day. And by the end of the week, you're just going to become a stronger person mentally and you'll be more prepared for a lot of things. Right. Awesome. Thank you very much for that advice. Uh, we're running short on time. I've got a couple more questions. What is the, in the future, we're almost the end of the year. You had an amazing 2023. You had an amazing 21 years old of, t- of life. However, what do you have in the future so far? Anything that besides, of course, Peacock, Oxygen, be on the lookout for it. <clears throat> We're not going to say who just because we don't want to get in trouble. But uh, what else do you have that you are already know, seen, have heard that might come to fruition? Um, well, I'm already. Uh, well, I already I'm casted for another production. I'm already what? starting to get prepared for that one. So that one happens in January. Um, right now, I am still, like I even told my mom, I was like, I'm not done with 20. I'm not done with this year. I need to do one or two more things because that's what I want. I'm not just going to end it with, mind you, I've been in like five or six productions this year, including, you know, television, working with television projects right. and commercials. Right. Um being on you know tv being on a stage but i am not done this year like i am still my agents are sending me auditions and i'm still submitting so my goal is to do at least one or two more things just to end i mean my year if i ended it right here it'd be phenomenal it'd be great but i there's still more in me like i From still Texas, go big or go home i still have november some of yeah. november I still have yeah. all of december to really just find it and seek it and accomplish it. Um, it's really just putting myself out there and turning in these auditions and yeah. um, meeting Oh, it's going to happen for you. I'm almost for certain you're going to get at least two, I three, or four. begin in January with my next big production, which I'm very excited for. And that's as far as you got so far right now, January? As far as January. The um, and then there's two more things in the works for February. Anything you can disclose? That no, want to get you in trouble legally? That part, no. That part. Okay, <laughs> we're not going to go into that part. Okay, we're good with that. All right, is, uh, real quickly, before we let you go, all your social media, where can people find you? Where can people follow you? If they would, wanted to book you for any kind of um, production, well, who do they need to reach out? Or coordinating or videos, because you've been in many videos. You've been in videos. You've been in commercials. You Everything. Mm-hmm. Movies, most likely. You might be the biggest thing we ever had here on the podcast. To, up it. to date, up to date, <laughs> pending. But uh, what what else? Uh, all your social media, and where to, where to book you at? So for my social media, my Instagram is Michaela C. Fuentes Official, and then my Facebook is Michaela C. Fuentes. Um, but if you want to book me, you could uh, book me through Instagram. I have all my information on my page, mm-hmm. and then if you want to contact my agency directly, it's Icon Studios Talent Agency. And my agents are Normita and Nick. Nice. Awesome. And uh, any shout outs that you have? Anybody that you want to? I know there's tons of people that probably that helped you along the way. But anybody, if she doesn't say your name, she didn't forget. I'm just saying. They said a lot. <laughs> but who would you like to give some shout outs to? Uh, 
Um, I would love to get a shout out mm-hmm. to my parents, both Dean and Maria Cifuentes. Um, Hola, mom. Uh, She's in the audience today. Uh, my family, my family has been there for me this year, and I'm so grateful for them. Um, just because they don't see me pretty much anymore, because I'm always busy yeah. and I'm always traveling, I'm always working. So the times that I have asked them to come see me, they have shown up, and I'm so grateful for that. Um, even being home for a couple weeks and if my cousin wants to come over and see me or if we want to go out to eat, they, yes. So huge shout out to my family for always being there for me because that is your blood. They always yeah. have your back. Um, of course my mentor, Becky Upshaw, um, and then all of the dance productions that I have worked with, uh, Brianna Moriarty, she is the... Mm-hmm casting and choreographer for the nightmare before nutcracker right. an absolute amazing woman that i've ever worked with crazy shout out to her because she is so incredible she did six people's jobs <laughs> um wow. she is awesome but that was amazing that is that's all i could think of right now <laughs> Never. don't take it personal you're probably in her mind and her heart okay what is an important lesson that you learn whether it would be in the performing arts, dancing, uh, any kind of performance, anything that you learned that you would tell your younger self that will help somebody else out. Oh, my gosh. She'd be jumping up and down right now. Uh, <laughs> I always think this in my head. Um, if I could go back and tell my younger self anything, it would really be to just be careful who you listen to. <laughs> and... Um, be careful who you put in your ear because having a lot of voices in your ear, it's just a lot. It's just a lot, especially as you're younger and you're asking everybody for advice or you're asking, you know, your older peers, uh, older peers for advice. And it was just for me in particularly trying to take everything in at, you know, 12, 11, 10, 11, 12 years old. And you know, seeking advice from yeah. everybody, but it kind of got, it did get overwhelming because it was too many voices. So mm-hmm. when I did narrow it down to three primary or two primary, um, it truly did help me a mm-hmm. lot. But what I can say is, you know, really be careful who you hang around, be in an environment that you are around driven and hardworking people. Right. I think that is one thing that did help me grow, uh, grow up, mm-hmm. um, growing up in particularly, um, you know, stay and stay humble, right. stay humble. Don't ever get big headed. Don't ever think that, you know, everything. Don't ever think that you are better than someone else. Um, I say that to all my students because I get humbled every single day because no matter who is in the room, I mm-hmm. promise you they know something that you don't know. Um, so my biggest thing is stay humbled, never get big headed and being young. When you're around older dancers that have been in this industry, sometimes having a conversation with one individual at a time because there's like i'm i'm really big yeah. on there's so many voices that happen if you're trying to like take it in like just break it down like one at a time um but they there's a reason why you could learn so much from older dancers mm-hmm. there is a reason why they are so successful right listen because they can give you amazing advice because they have done everything that i have done they can tell you you know this probably isn't a good idea because i did this and (laughs) it's it's not gonna happen but um it would be that just to stay humble um stay educated always seek education learn three to five new things every day even as an adult i still try to do that with anybody that i encounter it could be somebody at a gas station just the way they approached me or mm-hmm. just the way they said excuse me ma'am but can you please you know if they're asking me to move uh you know it's just you know how are you gonna ask me to move yeah how, how are you gonna approach me and oh you asked me very nicely noted maybe when someone else is in my way i could say it just like this little things like that of course. um stay humble stay educated and keep keep going just between you and i here <clears throat> the cameras are not here have you ever had a time where you felt like 
the Eagles got a little bit too much for you? And how what brought you to what brought you to be grounded more? Like have you ever like I felt like I know it all and everything and then who brought you back? Um Nobody's here, by the way. Truthfully, no. Awesome. Because <laughs> Because I have always been around such talented dancers. I have felt that, you know, I feel empowered when I am around amazing dancers. Mm -hmm. um, and I am grateful that I can truthfully say that I have always been around amazing dancers. Right. Where an ego situation was never an issue for me. It was more of, we need to look good as a group. We need mm -hmm. to get it together. We need this extra rehearsal. So as far as, and no, just okay. because I have been blessed with so much talent in my life, mm -hmm. you'd be foolish to say that you were the best in the room. If anything, you want to be the best, you know, group to compete because you're such a unit and you're such a family. Um, but it would be foolish to ever say that you're the I best. I can hear Miss Becky's voice coming out at you uh -huh. whenever you say certain things, you know, because uh -huh. I know NG. I've been there. I felt the environment. I felt the energy. I felt the same approach. And some of the things you're saying is kind of like, like if you was there channeling in right now. I mean that, and we grew. I grew up with mentors and coaches telling me all the time. You know, you think, you think you're trying hard mm -hmm. there's another dancer in another state that's put in double the hours in like just when you think that you're at your peak you got to keep going because you can never and i tell my students all the time never get comfortable like n you you truly can't especially yeah. as a performing artist if you want to be involved in the entertainment industry there's truly no off days you never know when you're going to get that phone call saying hey i need you on set at 5 a.m or Hey, can you do a photo shoot tomorrow? It's like, are you physically prepared? Are you mentally prepared? Are you in like you just have to always be ready. So yeah. a healthy lifestyle is a plus. <laughs> yeah. You want to have that healthy lifestyle because you you never know when you're gonna get that phone call or that email or that text saying, Hey, I need you on set, or hey, I need you in a show in two days. You have one day to rehearse. Jeez, like that. Mm -hmm. But are you so good that you can take on the assi assignment if you wanted to because you've been training for so long. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. This one's a little deeper, a little deeper question. I, I thoroughly enjoy it uh, just because for me, it helps me whenever I wake up or throughout the day, I remember, remind myself, I'm not immortal. I am mortal and I will die one day. And that's I'm not to scare woman. me. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't doubt it. For me, it's not to scare me. It's not to be like, oh, my God, I this or send me into a panic. It's more like I need to go here and do stuff now because I know that it's not, I'm not here forever. With that, I wish you a long, prosperous life. However, when everything's said and done, what do you want people to think or feel about your life? I want to be able to move people. I don't want it to just be about my accomplishments in life. I don't. My job as an artist is to move people every single time I step on stage. And every single time I get in front of that camera. So if I am able to move you and to be memorable in your mind and to say, wow, Michaela C. Fuentes really, um, really empowered that story. I felt that story. Maybe that story connected with them in their life. Maybe right. they felt it. Maybe it gave them joy or maybe it gave them um, comfort. So for me, when I do go, my thing is, I want to be able to impact someone's life. It's not about my accomplishments. I want to, for someone to be able to say, that woman inspired me. That woman educated me. That woman molded me. She mentored me. She taught me the ins and the outs. And right. um, whenever she, I seeked advice, she gave it to me. So just being a morally a good person to people and being able to be there for them and inspire them and educate them and I always tell my students, be better than me. Like, mm -hmm. please, like, I beg you. I want them to be more successful than me. So that's that's my statement. Awesome. <laughs> I thoroughly enjoy our conversation. I really did. I know you were great already <clears throat> because I knew the, the kind of people that you were around. Even way back in the days when I first met you, 
years ago when you were I first met Angie and when I first met Miss Becky and the things that y'all were doing. So I always knew you were great. I just didn't realize how much of a, even a mature mind, such a young age that you have and all the jewels that you have that I'm sure is going to help somebody out. I absolutely have no doubt whatsoever that you, somebody, I was telling your mom, there's power in sharing because I feel like sometimes we're seeking and seeking and waiting for the right person. I don't know if it's the frequency. I don't know if it's the sound. But I know whatever you said is going to help somebody, a young lady or whatever, a young man even, to be able to continue and further themselves, especially the way you carry yourself. I do really uh, hope that you are one of the ones that are forever super famous and known because I know that you already prepared and did all the work for. And it will be amazing that if you are. And I have no doubt whatsoever, everything you continue to do with the amazing people that you have around you you're going to continue to do great things and without a doubt Michaela Sinfuentes you are a global Latin factor thank you very much for being here I appreciate thank your time you. had awesome. a good time this was another episode of the global Latin factor podcast remember to subscribe 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 remember and remember we are just like you we are people we are the spice in this melting pot that it is the world until next time us. Thank you so much for being part of the community, checking out this amazing story and this amazing episode. Make sure you go and subscribe to the channel and check out the episodes that we already have prepared for you. Thank you very much. Until next time. Pero Batin Fake is a flamingo coming to Havana and Rizum Puerto Rico.